My belief is I'm going to vote for Biden. If I interviewed Trump, I would look him in his face and tell him why. I would never, I'm not calling you a racist. I'm not saying that all of your policies were wrong. Hell, the economy was thriving before COVID. I remember. But you don't know how to act. You just, I said, you don't care what you say. You don't care about how divisive you come across. You don't have any sensitivity whatsoever. That Trump's divisiveness. Let me ask you, Stephen. You're going for president. Mm -hmm. You're going to go run for president. As you come in, you don't even think you're going to win. You find out, Stephen, that the president before you was spying on you and your campaign. Think about this. Think about this. Spying on your campaign. Then the chick that you're running against paid all these millions to have this fake Russian thing. So, by the way, your anger's building. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. Then the two impeachments. Then this 2020 FBI's at Twitter blocking all the stories from Hunter and everything. How was your, you, Stephen A. Smith, how was your attitude going to be? Are you going to be like this guy? All right, folks. So Stephen A. Smith recently went on the PBD podcast, and I have to say it is just simply something to behold. Dare I say it was actually kind of frustrating to listen to because if you're not familiar, Stephen A. has been spending a lot of time talking politics over the past couple of years, and I don't exactly know why anyone takes his political opinion seriously. You'll listen to him, you'll hear him. Not exactly the most intelligent political guy you will ever hear in your life. Now, sports-wise, yeah, he knows his stuff. I don't see why people take his political opinion so seriously, but clearly they do because he does have something of a platform with this political talk. But I have to say, you listen to this and it's a special level of kind of dumb and frustrating, not because Stephen A just absolutely has zero clue what he's talking about, but more specifically, because if you listen to this whole show, Stephen will basically admit to you He says it at one point in the show that he's mostly a conservative, right? A lot of his values, at least in the modern day, are conservative. He admits that they align with the Republican Party, but he says he won't vote for Trump. I kid you not, very openly here, because he just doesn't like his personality. That's what it really comes down to. And then he admits at a different point, as you'll see in this clip, that he's really not informed about politics. He doesn't really know what he's talking about, but he still spends all this time talking about politics. It's like, what does that even mean? And you'll hear him here uh, and throughout a lot of the show, if you want to go watch the full thing, rip the left extensively. He sounds like a Republican when he talks about Biden and and the left and the woke and all this stuff. But he says, at the end of the day, I think I'm still going to vote for Biden. And it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. We'll play it for you here today. React to it. Listen to it. You can see it yourself. And I think PBD actually does a pretty good job here grilling him on his, dare I say, Trump derangement syndrome, or at least delusion a little bit. Just take a listen for yourself to some of this exchange, folks. It's pathetic. And it is no excuse for it whatsoever. It is 2024. In eight years, you should have been able to find somebody that can compete with this man other than a soon-to-be 82-year-old incumbent. Well, let me ask you this, though. Yes. Do you want Democrats to win? <sighs> That's a tough question That's for me. the question, yeah. It is, it's, but it's totally fair, bro. I'm not going to yeah. run that question. It's totally fair. Keep in mind, he just spent the prior part of the show absolutely ripping Joe Biden, talking about how in pacing, I'm not kidding you, go watch it. Stephen A basically talks about how uh, every aspect of the country (laughs) was better under Trump. And so PBD asked him pretty much straight up, hey, you sound like you're voting for Trump. Like, hey, okay, uh, do you want the Democrats to win or not? And after, again, spending an entire show ripping Joe Biden, sounding a lot like a conservative podcaster or something, Listen to what Stephen A. has to say. It truly breaks my brain. Um, I have to confess what most folks who sit before guys like yourself don't. It's hard to figure out. Like, for example, supposedly we've got a good economy. Unemployment is relatively decent, around 4%. You know, black unemployment, a little under 6%, about 5.6%, if I remember correctly. Um... But then you listen to the right and it's like, what about inflation? And then you're driving in California and you're paying an arm and a leg for gas. 
You go into the supermarket, you buy some milk, you buy some bread, whatever. Because see, contrary to what po- folks believe, I actually do go to the supermarket. <laughs> you okay, I do buy my own stuff. You know, all of this other stuff. I'm like, you're watching and you're seeing all of this stuff, and it's like, who's telling the truth? Do we have a good economy or not? Is it really a crisis at the border or not? I believe it is. Yeah. Do you, uh, you know, is inflation a real thing? Is it imaginary? You're looking at all of these different things. You're talking about national security, the war in Ukraine. Should we support them? Should we give them more money than we've already given them? You're looking at the, you know, Israeli, uh, you know, Hamas conflict. I call it the Israeli Hamas conflict as opposed to the Israeli Palestinian conflict, you know, but I don't touch that because I don't know enough. And you read, the different publications. I'll read the Washington Post one minute. I'll read the New York Times the next. I'll read Wall Street Journal the next. I'm, I'm watching the channels, Fox News, MSNBC, CNN. I'm going back and forth. And literally, we've changed as a society. We can take the same information and put a completely different twist on it yeah. to make it look like who's right is wrong. Somebody as knowledgeable as you guys have proven to be mm-hmm. with no more than me at this moment in time. I'm studying more and more and more of it every day Mm. because I'm fixated on it just like I am with sports. But I'm... Okay, fair enough, right? It's okay to admit you don't know everything. In fact, I think that's pretty humble. That's pretty respectable. But then why have you spent so much time talking about politics? (laughs) Right? You, you, You basically admit, I don't really know this stuff that well. Okay, again, fair enough. But you just spent... Again, if you watch this full show... You just spent 40 minutes ripping Biden on political issues for the most part. Finally, PBD asks you a very simple question. Okay, so do you want him to win or not? Suddenly he says, I don't exactly know. I don't really know anything about politics, guys. I'm sorry, that's a little bit shifty. That's a little bit dodging the question, to tell you the truth. It's really, really difficult to say, oh, I know this. But if you tell me these are the facts, Stephen, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I don't give a damn what it is. I can tell you how I feel about it. Oh, my gosh. I can do that. Yeah. You know, it's it's interesting you say that. And, and thank you for being, you know, straight up with it. That's the one thing about you that why I relate and I like watching you. Here's what it makes me think about mm-hmm. when, when asking about who you want to vote and who do I believe? Do I go with the guy on the left or the guy on the right? You ever had a guy in the NBA or sports that we all criticized? Mm-hmm. And the media went after him. So everybody's like, what a freaking guy, you know, piece of this and da 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 Seven years later, like, dude, that guy was mistreated by everybody. Right. What was that all about, right? And you're like, dude, no, no, no. no yeah. I'm, listen, I'm not with you, man. I'm over here. Mm-hmm. I'm on this guy's side. I don't like what you did. Mm-hmm. You know, the truth is this. Right. <laughs> Today, four years versus four years, we got three Afghanistan screw up. You know, Ukraine and, 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 you know, Russia, it looks like we're going to have to give yep. these guys another Afghanistan of a couple trillion dollars of taxpayers' yep. money that we keep sending money. Oh, great. Right. Israel, Hamas. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Whether we know everything about the history of it or not, how come this didn't happen four years ago? How come there was nothing going on four years ago? Mm-hmm. So when you look at it that way, what is happening a lot that I talk to guys who are uh, uh, celebrities, influencers, mm-hmm. yep. Hollywood, TV, somebody that you watch. There's a couple different camps. There's a one camp that is like, (laughs) look, man, I'm still going to vote left. There's the other camp that says, dude, I'm not going to tell you who I'm voting Mm -hmm. for, which is kind of like the middle. (laughs) Um, I think you got to fight. And and I think, you know, moms left certain values of Mm -hmm. pride and dad. And it's like, Mm -hmm. hey, Mm -hmm. dude, you got a job to protect this country that gave you this life. And I feel like there is something going on with you that's kind of like, you know, you want to talk, but, you know, it's kind of like, am I really going to say this? Can I really say this? It's not that. It's not. It's just that I want to be as sure as you are. That's what I'm saying. I owe it to the audience. I owe it to the people to make sure that if I'm going to come out with fire and brimstone, I know what the hell I'm talking about. And sometimes when it comes to these issues, I don't. So I'm just being honest. Bro, about what would happen but, if you came but, out and you said, let's just say in okay. the month of October. OK, again, fair enough. But then why do you have such strong opinions on this? It's such a it's like it's sort of a defense mechanism, right? When you know you're talking to someone smarter, suddenly you say now you don't know what you're talking about. OK, just listen to this. Stephen A. came out. OK, let's be real. Here. Sure. You came out on your podcast, obviously not at the network, you right. would, but on your podcast, you said, guys, 
I'm going to say something right now. You guys are going to be very upset at me. Good. What happened if you in the month of October said I'm voting for Trump? What I'd would be, happen? I'd be called a sellout and a coon by my own community. That would be automatic. That's exactly what they would say. But what I would tell you is to know something about me, I wouldn't give a damn. I'm not scared. I'll say what I feel. Let me tell you, let me address the point that you made earlier. My belief is I'm going to vote for Biden. Now, uh, <laughs> you have to remember, it's how you're looking at the presidential election might be a little bit different than me. For example, okay. I'm the kind of person that might vote for the president being a Democrat in every other position Republican. Every senator, every congressional figure, every local. In other words, because I view the presidency, I understand it's the commander in chief. I get it. But I view and, and listen, I will preface it by saying I'm open to correction. I truly am. I view the presidency as more of a statesmanship position. I would if, if I interview Trump, I would look him in his face and tell him why. I would never, I'm not calling you a racist. I'm not saying that all of your policies were wrong. Hell, the economy was thriving before COVID. I remember. But you don't know how to act. You just, I said, you don't care what you say. You don't care about how divisive you come across. You don't have any sensitivity whatsoever to how you scare the living hell out of people with your rhetoric. And this right here should immediately just discredit everything Stephen A. believes politically, even though, again, when I listened to a lot of the beginning of this podcast, I actually agreed with a lot because he was criticizing Biden. He was talking about what a mess the country is right now. And I said, you know, you're right. But he says he's going to still vote for Biden anyway. Basically, let me paraphrase that because he just doesn't like the vibe of Trump. He just doesn't like the personality. Yeah, he agrees with most of the policies way more than Biden, but the vibes. That is such, like, I, I, do I have to explain that? That is just such a stupid and irrational way to view politics, okay? You're not voting on the person or the personality, ultimately. Yes, when I look at a greater scheme of things, I do say, okay, Maybe this personality is more electable than that. But at the end of the day, when you're reaching a general election, that's not what it's about, okay? You can seem like a nice guy like Joe Biden. Now, I would also say you want to talk about statesmanship. I don't think Joe Biden being, uh, you know, half dead half the time, or I should say half dead most of the time, is exactly a statesman thing either. But that's a debate to be had, whatever. You're going to determine your vote based on the vibes, okay? When in reality, the policies that each president pushes for, as you could see the past eight years, do have a real impact on the country. They're not just the royal family where they just sit there and kind of be a figurehead. Okay, it's just, okay, let, let's keep listening to this. And with your, your aloof, I don't know if the word is aloofness or just a disregard for the importance of unity. I believe you believe in America. I believe in America. Let me tell you what I believe in about America. I believe that when we're together, nothing can stop us. Nothing. I don't care if it's a bad president. I don't care if it's bad people on Capitol Hill. I don't care if corporate America is garbage. I don't care if Wall Street's messing up. We will overcome anything when we're together. And I remember how I felt this way. And this is the only time I'm 56 years old. And it's the only feelings again. That's what this is about. It's fe I'm voting for Biden because of my feelings, which by the way, to really break that down, is America any more united now than it was under Trump? Is it like you want to talk about the importance of national unity? I agree. That's true. Now, Donald Trump did not do a lot for national unity, but I would argue it's not necessarily his fault either. I mean, we are just a divided country. But if you want to go by that metric, is the country any more united? It, the only thing I might point out is, hey, maybe some people who were anti-Trump years ago are now united against Biden. But I mean, really? <laughs> All right. So I think by now we've basically got the crux of Stephen A. Smith's argument. He doesn't like Trump's vibe. He doesn't like Trump's personality. He thinks he should handle himself differently. So it's not a policy difference. Like I said, if you'll listen to the rest of this, he actually agrees with a lot of Trump's policies. But he has that very just irrational view of 
it, like he, he he admits himself almost that what he believes doesn't really make sense. It's kind of emotional. Here now, folks, we're going to close it out as PBD absolutely tears apart that logic very well. Here you go. Mr. Stephen A. Smith. Yes, sir. So remember when I said earlier, I said at 41, 42 years old. Yes, sir. You're going through that. And what was your answer? Yeah, I didn't know any better. <clears throat> because it was the first time ever you're going through that. Right. H doesn't matter. Right. So to him, this is the first time he's been a president. He's delivered an incredible economy to the country. Why are they turning against me? Well, I it's feel- the first time he was president, but it wasn't the first time he campaigned. He campaigned in 2016. Campaign. So winning in 2016, this is four yeah. years later. I know. But 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 from the perspective, I wrote a couple things down here. Right. So in in uh, 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 running an insurance company, yeah. you know, I've been being in it for 20 some years. You know what it taught me a lot? It taught me a lot about human nature. Yeah. And, you know, you, you're like, I've never run a big company this size. Every year I didn't run a company that size. So every I'm like, I've never run a company this size. I've never run it. Shit, right. I'm dealing with all these different states, 49 states, a few hundred offices, 30,000 agents. You know, I've never, I'm comfortable with 20 agents, 50 agents, 100 agents. So every time you go into a new place, like yeah. it's a new level, right? Sure. How do you handle? Okay. And I learned one thing very quickly. The guys that were complaining and bitching and were the loudest um, were able to convert more people into their way of thinking than the quiet guys that went and just got the job done. Mm. Okay. So if, if we have to choose between the left and the right, which ones are more professional complainers, it's the left. Mm-hmm. Complainers. I don't think the right has anybody that is as good as in complaining as AOC is. Mm-hmm. I don't think the right has anybody that's as good as complaining as, you know, Bernie Sanders is. Right. I don't, Elizabeth Warren, professional. I can go on and on and on mm-hmm. to be like, all oh, these rich people and these capitalists and all the look up and say, should anybody be worth this kind of money? You know, yeah. or look at this guy, you should, Walmart, Amazon, you guys should be paying $15 an hour minimum wage. How should these billionaires not pay 15 bucks an hour? Uh, hey, bro. You, you, Bernie Sanders, you don't pay your employees 15 bucks an hour. <laughs> oh, well, you know, I, you, we're going to make that adjustment. Oh, so you're a hypocrite. Yeah. You want, okay, totally. I got you. No I problem. You. So no you want, you're the millionaires and billionaires right. and millionaires and billionaires. Then you become a millionaire. Now it's billionaires, mm-hmm. right? So I'm sorry, you're a millionaire now. So w- when, when you watch all of that and you're, you're going through it himself, mm-hmm. credit to the left for making him and painting him out to be the enemy that he became. See, it's that simple, right? You, as Stephen A. Smith, can hate Donald Trump's personality or his leadership style or whatever, but when it comes down to the results, which would be one thing if you disagree on the results, Stephen A., you listen to this whole thing, does not dispute those results, then what are we doing here, man? What are we doing? Okay? You listen to the rest of this. He says, I would vote for any other Republican besides Trump or DeSantis because Biden actually does suck and I'm leaning more Republican, but (laughs) Trump's personality, I just can't. It's just it's so I don't know how you get through to that. How do you reason with someone like that? I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of discrediting, though. I mean, I feel like if you make that admission openly. Maybe you just shouldn't really be talking politics, but it is what it is. With that said, folks, let me know your thoughts on Stephen A. Smith's, yeah, we'll call it Trump derangement syndrome in the comment section down below. Be sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and until next time, Alpha Moves Only, God bless. Have a very blessed Easter weekend, and peace.